you guys welcome back to my channel so today we're going to be combining washi tape vinyl metallic paint and some other stuff to make this clock absolutely stunning so the first thing that i'm going to do is because i want just the numbers to be one particular color is i'm just going to mix up a tiny little bit of resin and i'm going to add some gold mica powder to it and just kind of fill in these numbers and letters on the clock again i'm pouring this is sped up for you guys just so that you don't have to sit through you know 30 minutes of me just doing the numbers and whatnot but i am pouring it fairly slowly so that the resin has time to go into every little crack and crevices of these numbers and letters so that i don't have any air pockets that are going to be stuck in those 90 degree angles also i am going through with the tip of a micro brush right now just to kind of get in there and make sure that it is stuck i changed to a dotting tool because i wasn't liking the way the micro brush was working just to make sure that there's no air bubbles in there anywhere stuck and then what i'm gonna do is because especially on that three i've got a little bit of an over pour and i don't want that stuck on my clock I just took a paper towel and I'm kind of sopping up all that excess resin in there, cleaning up around all that number and in between the lettering of there just to get that extra resin out of there so that it's just in the holes. I found that when I was doing the 3, 6, 9, and 12, it was easier just to kind of pour the resin over top of the entire thing than to try and get it in there drip by drip. Now what I want to do is I'm going to pour a thin, clear layer of resin down. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I still have where the numbers are. Like, the resin kind of shrunk back some, so it's not like it's domed or anything like that. So there is some places where air bubbles can get stuck, and I want to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles in this piece whatsoever. I also want kind of like a dividing layer between what I'm going to do next and those numbers. So they kind of stand out just a little bit more from what my background is going to be with them. Just taking my silicone tool now and I'm going over all of the just everywhere on here that any micro bubbles can be stuck to the bottom of the silicone around the little piece for the clock dial just all over the place and then I'm going to hit it with my heat gun and we're going to let this layer cure. Now I am going in heavy heavy with this heat gun. I am going to push this resin around, move it, thin it out, make sure that any any bubbles in there whatsoever are completely gone so that I get just a beautiful beautiful finish to this part. Also, I'm going back and any ones that I found that are kind of, you know how sometimes they get stuck to the silicone on that bottom layer. And I'm just going to kind of pull those up, being careful not to scratch my mold and get those gone. And then we're going to hit it with our heat gun again just to pop those bubbles and be done with it. I do want to take a minute out to apologize if my audio is kind of screwy today. My mic wasn't working right and I'm just using the mic on my laptop. so. If it's not working right and it sounds funny, that's why. And I apologize in advance for it. I, I don't know what's going on with my mic. It's like super, super staticky for some reason. It happened once before and then it fixed itself. So I'm hoping that's the case today because I really don't have to get another mic. Anyway, back to the video. So again, just hitting it with this heat gun and kind of any kind of bubbles that I see. I'm just working those to the top so that the heat pops them. And then we're going to be done with this part and then it's going to be on to the next where we're going to have some fun. Okay, so letting this cure. Here we are 24 hours later. Now it's time to do the background of this piece. Now I had another idea for it and then I completely changed my mind midway through because it wasn't working out the way I wanted it to. So we're just going to do this. What I'm doing is I'm taking some, it's Litter Bees Metallic Powder. It's called Cream White, but essentially what it is, it's an interference gold. And I kind of want to give the background like a creamy type look, like a creamy white, as opposed to just straight white or straight anything. And I'm just going to add a little bit of my Super Sparkle White in here just to give it a little bit more shine. Whiten it up just a little bit more because it is looking 
more goldish as opposed to the creaminess that I want. And I'm just going to keep kind of fooling around with the color until I'm happy with it. And then we're going to pour it in and then we're going to have some more fun with this. So all your discount codes and links to everything that I use will be in the description box below. Uh, just take note that if you have used any for the Nick Pro, the 72 ounce kit, it has changed that coupon expired. I have a new coupon code for you that will be in today's uh, description box, just so that you know. Okay, so poured that white in. Now what I want to do is after I hit it with my heat gun, I'm going to add a little bit of bronze to this. Now my thought process is I kind of want to give it a marbleish look. Completely like marbled, marbled. I just want to kind of put some of this color in and get like just between, I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, marble would be great, but I haven't been able to figure out how to marble stuff yet and get it to look right. And I know this isn't the way I'm adding way too much of the bronze to be able to do that, but I am just kind of giving it just an extra look so that it's not just that kind of interference gold creaminess that I'm went for and it's going to have some of this in there too. I didn't want to do gold because again, I want those gold numbers to stand out by themselves so that it doesn't blend in too much with this clock. Kind of swirling it in, hitting it with the heat gun. We're going to let this cure. All right, 24 hours later, here we are. And it looks kind of cool from the back. You know, I mean, like I said, it, it I haven't figured out how to marble stuff yet. Uh, that's on my to-do list, but it looks pretty. I think so anyway. So now we're going to demold this and then we're going to work on the front. And you can see when I demold it, like there's that barrier in there. If I hadn't, you, it would have been just straight up on those numbers and you know, it, it's, it's pretty, but it needs a little something, something still. So we're we're not done with this yet. So what we're going to do, I played around with what I wanted to use. If I wanted to use flowers or whatever out of the washi tape that I got. Now this is, I think it's called PET tape or something like that. It's kind of like the stickers that, that have like that clearness and then the adhesive on the back, that extra plastic piece that you can pull off. So it's like a sticker, but not. Anyway, all I'm doing right now is I'm going to cut around the numbers. So I want it to kind of just go diagonally over here and then kind of fade out into where the actual clock part is. I looked at some flowers and I just, I wasn't happy with them. So I thought like these leaves would look pretty. It's kind of, they're not like super, super bright and vivid. So they kind of just add a little bit of something without being overkill or being too too bright in the colors and and all that good stuff you know what i mean like it needed something but i didn't want to overdo it and the person who i'm making this for i'm actually making it for my sister and her house her living room where i, I think she might put it is kind of very very neutral very very like it doesn't have a lot of color color to it so i think that this will fit in good i didn't want to make something that was too colorful and kind of didn't fit the scheme of what she's going for in her house. Anyway, I used my Cricut tool to just kind of pull that uh, backing off of this. And then I'm going through and kind of lining it up because I just want it to be a diagonal. Again, this is just to accent it. There's going to be something that's going over this. That is the main purpose of it. I just wanted just a little bit of something extra on there. So it wasn't just quite so plain. Going through very slowly, very carefully to make sure that I don't get any air pockets in here. At this point, I haven't decided yet how to finish it. So because of the numbers, because of the hole and all that stuff, I didn't know because vinyl's going over top of this. And I know that I should seal it so I don't have any kind of issue with it coming off later on. And I haven't decided if I wanted to add a top coat of resin to it or if I just want to put some kind of like a clear varnish or something like that to kind of seal all of this in. So I'm not sure yet, not right here, how I'm going to do this. 
Now going through, cutting out the last little bit of the numbers, I thought it would be easier to do it at the end as opposed to doing it at the beginning. Smoothing it out, again, I used my little Cricut tool to kind of smooth it all out and make sure that there are no air pockets. Push it down really, really well. And then this excess on here, I'm going to just get my craft knife and I'm going to kind of just go over it just to get the little bit of excess off of it so that it doesn't hang over and look all kinds of dumb and it has a nice finish to it. Okay, now it's time for the vinyl. Now this is her favorite scripture, so I decided that I wanted to add this to it and I'm using a black kind of like metallic textured, not metallic, it's a textured vinyl for this. Okay. So I chose black because I really want this to stand out. I don't want it to get lost in there. And I was worried with all the other colors that I had, it just wouldn't look right. So I thought black was the best for this. And I asked my husband and he agreed with me. So I'm just going on and I'm going to put this on. Now I love this textured vinyl. It is so beautiful. It works so very well. It cuts great. It, it just, everything about it, I love. And I also, the only thing I don't love is the fact that you have to use the extra super sticky transfer tape, which when you first do it gets stuck to everything. So you have to be really careful. Otherwise, if, especially if you're using it like while your resin is still in a mold, it can like pull it away from the mold, which can cause problems. But I don't have to worry about that right now because it's not in the mold. Anyway, so putting it on and then we're going to go. And at this point, I decide that I'm not going to I'm not going to do a top coat of resin being as this is only the second clock that I've made I'm kind of worried because you don't have a whole lot of room with the clock parts that I have and I'm worried that if I put on another top coat that it's going to uh make it so thick that I'm not going to be able to get all the clock parts in together and where I'll fool with that at a later time as this was a gift for her. I didn't want to have to, I don't know, I didn't want it to be screwed up and then have to remake it. Now, at this point, I also decided that I wasn't loving the color that I chose for the numbers. Like, it just wasn't standing out enough. I didn't really care for it with the background. So I took my gold paint pen and I decided that I was going to go over the numbers with that. Now, at the time, I was super happy with it, and I still think it looks good, but, but, after editing the video and doing the voiceover and whatever, and I'm looking at it now, and I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have gone black instead, or as my husband said when I was actually doing this, he thought that I should go and on, because these numbers are like puffed out, right? on the sides of the numbers, because I didn't do that. I just did over the top part with this gold paint pen, the sides of the numbers, making them black and having them really stand out, which would have been awesome, except for the fact that I didn't have a black marker or a black paint pen that was small enough that I could go in there and do it without completely screwing it up. And I didn't want to use acrylic paint because I just didn't think the shine would be there. And I just, I didn't think that was a good idea. So I think that would have been really cool to do too. If I had a small enough like little nibby thing on a marker, which I didn't at the time. So that's something I'm going to have to look into because I think that could be really, really neat to do. Or have colored them black and then just gone over the top with it. Like actually did when I put the resin in, made it black and then going over the top with this, then I would still get that effect that he was talking about without having to worry about going over it. You know what I mean? Anyway, so doing all of this now, I think it looks better. I I'm liking the color a lot more than I was liking that initial gold that I put there. And then I'm just going to spray over this with a couple coats of like a clear acrylic varnish, uh, that I purchased and we're going to let that be like that. Now, I don't know if I did something wrong with the varnish or if it's just how it turns out because I've never used a, like a spray paint type varnish before. But when I sprayed it, it instead of 
drying like clear and flat it has like a texture to it now and i mean i shook the can up really well unless i put too much or too little on I i'm i'm not sure what i did wrong or if that's just how it is but it's almost got like a bumpy texture for the finished product which i mean when you look at it you can't really really tell but I just know because I've seen the before and after, and I don't know. I, I wish it didn't do that, but it did. So, I, I don't know. Any of you that have used it before to seal your pieces in, have has this happened to you? Or is this just something, maybe it's just a garbage product? I mean, it's Rust-Oleum, so I would have thought that Rust-Oleum is a pretty, you know, renowned paint brand. So, I would have thought that it would have been a good one to get. Or maybe I just got the wrong kind. I don't know. but. Yeah, that's what happened. I I am going around the edge with this, just kind of finish it off, and it kind of hides that edge of the washi tape that I put on there. But I think all in all, I think it looks really pretty. Now, when I put the actual clock parts on, and this is where right now I think, yeah, black may be looking even better with, like if I had done the top of the numbers in black instead of the gold. But once I put the clock parts on, they're black. So I don't know if it would actually look better or not. And I, for those of you that have watched my first clock making video, um, I, I did it much better this time. I'm really proud of myself. It went on perfectly. I didn't have any problems at all putting this together. And it didn't take me forever and a year to do it like the last one did. Like it was beautiful, super easy. It was great. But yeah, let me know what you think. I'm curious if you think even with the black parts on, if it would have been too much black, if I should have done it in black, or what, I I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for the Glamour Shots. And I will catch you guys on Saturday for the next one. Love ya. Bye.